Hey there, this is Mr. Icarus, and welcome to yet another edition of Icarus Plays Doom 2016. We're descending even further into the Necropolis, and I believe this is a really good opportunity for us to rack up one of our challenges. Because we got two Kakos in the distance, in fact there's three Kakos, but if you line them up, there we go, you get a challenge completed. Lovely jubbly. So that's all of the challenges done. <laughs> Dead easy. Like I say, I feel like the, the difficulty baseline here is, is actually quite low, but there is a lot of really goddamn cool scenery. If you look down here, there's a giant skull and giant spinal cord just reaching out to the back there. Makes you wonder. Makes you you think what, what these things used to belong to. But in terms of the collectible, there's a cubus up there you might want to watch out for. But yeah, in terms of the collectible, if you turn around and jump down here, that's that over and done with. Very, very easy to miss. Missed it a fair few times before I uh, got rid of my stubbornness and actually looked at my auto map for help. And this is the first of the two Praetor Suit tokens that you can find down here. I think I'll have a fair amount of uh, weapon upgrade tokens right now as well, so I can probably put a few more points into a few things. What have we got? Any of our main mods that we're using that we can upgrade? Not really. Not really. We're all onto the mastery on those ones. Uh, precision bolt. Do we want that? Gatling. Mm. They, they just don't interest me quite as much, these alternates. But I think, yeah. We'll increase that one. Uh, you can generate heat passively. You see, that's the thing that I found about that mod that I didn't like so much. You've got to have it... Uh, continuously heating up before you can reap the benefit of the alternate fire. Whereas with the other one, it just automatically charges in the background. You don't really need to worry about it. You don't need to factor it into your combat. But this is the upgrade drone. One thing left. That is the full pack collected over and done with. And that's remote detonation. So you can fire a rocket and uh, click alt fire in order to detonate it. Which uh, can be useful. Again, not my particular jam. I, I much prefer locking on and letting loose. But, Gauss Cannon-wise, we may have another good opportunity to get mastery done here. Because a lot of the enemies down here actually get stuck in fighting. And, uh, yeah, you can just let them go about their business, line up a few good shots, and um, get yourself some mastery. So... It's the best way to go about this. I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Eeny, meeny, miny, mo. No, that didn't quite work. But yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll continue bickering amongst themselves for a while until one or more of them is dead. And then they'll turn their attentions to you. But yeah, pretty easy to take care of. I'm probably not going to be able to get that mastery, but... Maybe if we leap up top, there is a haste power-up up here. Which means we'll be able to be a lot more mobile. Maybe take out a lot more of these enemies. Maybe a few in a row. Hmm. They're all they're all scarpering. Are they afraid? Potentially. Oh no. Missed. I've got to remember that I don't have infinite ammo right now. It's very easy to get overzealous with this particular weapon. And if you're not using it on siege mode, you can uh Miss a few shots like that one. I'm just not focusing well enough. So, what should we switch to? Chain gun. Always a good shout. And now we can use these glory kills in order to rack up a few more armor shards. But yeah, a lot of revenants. And it's kind of weird to me considering that the revenants aren't a product of hell. Here. They're, they're a product of uh, the UAC science. It just makes me wonder how how many of these exactly did they make? How many poor sods did they transform down there in the Lazarus Labs? Ooh. But, in terms of collectible around here, uh, very easy to miss, but the giant icon of sin looking thing at the back there is what you need to be aiming at. Because the, the big red glowy thing in the top of its skull is, in fact, what you need to shoot with a rocket for it to drop the uh, the collectible for this particular level. A little convoluted, more convoluted than usual, but still quite cool. It's a nice little throwback. But before we even get there, we're going to have to survive the next section. And how are we doing for challenges? Have we done all of them? We've done all of them. Lovely. 
And what have we got ahead? We've got a Praetor Suit token. Uh, the collectible will appear around here somewhere. Yeah, we're well on track. We are well on track. More fuel for the fuel god, and... I'm thinking I might be using that on a Baron. <laughs> yep, definitely. You are getting chopped to teeny bits. And a little bit of clipping through the scenery there as well. So, how should we take this Baron down? I'm thinking good old Gauss Cannon. Let's get him a little closer to us. Come on. There we go. Actually, they're not really all that affected by explosive barrels. Oh, that took his head off. And we got Mancubuses. And after these... We should have Spectres again to deal with. Those blasted invisible pinkies. You just can't get rid of them. Let's uh, give the rocket launcher a little bit of love, shall we? But the rocket launcher is actually surprisingly effective against uh, summoners as well. When you've low... Forgot about that. If you've locked onto them, uh, the rockets generally do follow them, even if they do the weird zippy shit. Oh, you fecker. I had a feeling I was going to die. You know what? I should have used a siphon grenade. I should have used a siphon grenade. I always forget about the friggin' siphon grenade. Oh, well. So, we're going to have to do that little section all over again. To be honest, the, the, the reload checkpoints are very, very forgiving. Maybe I should have saved my chainsaw fuel for the, for the pinkies, for the spectres. I think that's what I might actually do. There's number two. See if we can take his head off. No, no, not yet. So, Mancubus, what should we use on you? Quite low on ammo, all things considered. I'm probably going to have to use that chainsaw. Fuel. And I was in a little bit of a bad position. It didn't trigger the animation properly, though, so he just kind of fell to pieces. But oh well, at least we got the ammunition. Pepper this guy in the face for a while. I'm overheated again. God damn it. And I'm low on health again. This is troublesome. Really, really got to get the hang of using the, uh, the siphon grenade a little bit more. It is a really, really useful tool, and I just do not use it anywhere near often enough. Because as you can see, now I'm, I'm doing reasonably well in terms of recouping my health, but could have saved myself a death on the death counter. I think that's what's annoyed me more. So. Down here we've got our next Praetor Suit token. Which should uh, give us enough to, I think, upgrade something. No, we need at least one more, so we're going to have to probably wait till the next level for that. And I think we've got some Kakos. Yeah. We'll take care of those from a distance. The fight down there might be a bit tricky as well, but before we crack on with that, we are going to shoot a rocket launcher into the middle of that skull. And there you go, we've got a little box. But if you've ever gotten to the end of Doom 2, the, the icon of Sin uh, spits these boxes out to spawn enemies. But here, it spits out a collectible. But yeah, not far off the end of the level now at all. Once we get through this encounter, we will be at the bosses. We will be at the Crucible Guardians. And I am eager to get my hands on that damn Crucible. So, who are we up against? And how best should I conserve my weaponry? Because I know a Baron or two turn up around here. There's one. Maybe if I back it up. No. Nope. Damn it. Right, okay. Let's focus. Uh, we've got two to go up against. This should be tricky, but this is where using the siphon grenade is always recommended. Takes a little health from them, gives it straight back to you. We're going to soften up this guy before he kills us. No. Bad. Bad. Bad Baron. Back to the demon pen for you. Thankfully, <laughs> there's a lot of health through here, so we'll be in good stead when it comes to dealing with the bosses. It, it is a regular old bonanza of all sorts of bits and pieces. We've got a BFG round, we've got extra armor, which should take us uh, just shy of 100. Ah oh well, what a shame. But as soon as we press this, this will take us through to the boss. So we're just going to have to mentally prepare ourselves. 
Make sure we've got the right tool for the job and all that. But, um, yeah, I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. But here we go. I've found that the super shotgun is uh, usually the best way to deal with this boss. It generally takes uh, a fair, fair bit of a chunk out of the health pool, but that's the crucible. It's the aim of our crusade. We just gotta get past these crustacean freaks first. And I'm gonna have to remember to take advantage of that BFG round as well, because once I've dealt with this guy, who's actually the, the hardest part of this boss battle, two more lesser guardians turn up as well, so we've, we've got to conserve our focus to some degree. And I think that the boss is still suffering from an animation glitch with its legs. If you, if you look at its legs, they don't uh, seem to be operating all that well, but um, I'm at the very least happy I've got the timing down when it comes to that orb it tries to fire at me. Because uh, what you can do is you can kind of blow up the orb before it has a chance to launch it at you, and it uh, causes the boss to stagger, essentially, as you get in a few free hits. But yeah, personally, uh, this this boss battling too tricky. It can catch you off guard every now and again, especially in the, uh, the latter half, because he starts switching up his attacks when he gets down below uh, half a health bar, and some of them are really damn vicious. Like, really goddamn vicious. I think that's what I'm going to save my uh, my BFG for. However, you got to be careful because that shield will pretty much... Pretty sure it'll block a BFG. Can block a BFG. Oh, there they go. Yeah, you just got to keep strafing. When those start coming down, you don't want to be, like, in mid-air. You just want to be strafing out of the way. This is pretty simple to get around as well. But hey... I appreciate bosses with phases. It's cool. It gives you something to actually react against rather than just plinking away at a health bar until it dies. You've actually got to do a little bit of evasion. You've got to actually be somewhat skilled. But, uh, not long left. Come on, try firing that orb again. There we go. Nearly the few more well-placed shotgun blasts and we are out of here. Damn, I nearly fell victim to ignoring my own advice there. I was jumping in the air when I was meant to just be strafing out of the way of harm. Uh, yep. Two more. One more. Sod it. It's glory kill him. Ah, I do love a good old boss glory kill. But yeah, unfortunately, this isn't the end of proceedings. <laughs> but you can, you can see what I mean with the legs. They don't quite... Uh, animate as fluidly as they should. And the same goes for the, the two subordinates here with the Hell Guards. But this is where I'm going to bring my BFG into the equation, because I don't have time to be dealing with this absolute bullshit. I've got places to be, things to do, and that took absolutely bugger all off the health pool of those things. So, I am going to be switching back to the Super Shotgun. And we're going to be Pretty much following the same technique we've been following for the vast majority of this battle so far, which is just plink away at them. But you'll also notice that they don't have the advantage of having a shield, so we can really go hell for leather on the attacking here. We don't have to... Shit. Play defensively as much. But I'm not quite sure at what point one of these will actually keel over and die. It'll be much easier to deal with the other one once his partner's bit the dust. Oh, there we go. Got my window. Ah, oh, damn it. Hate getting hit by that spinny shit. Which one of you is a weaker so far? I can't tell. They're like twins. They might have changed places a few times. I'm just waiting for at least one of them to become glory killable. Damn it. Come on. Any minute now. <laughs> that health bar's getting really low. Here we go, that's one. One worm squished. And next, who got his brother? Oh, thank you very much for the opportunity. Now I get to whittle your health down. And beat the ever-loving crap out of you. Here we go. Last one bites the dust. Time to squeeze the life out of some horrible hellworm. 
I hope there's a codex entry on those worms. Maybe it's uh, bundled together with the, the Hell Guards. But that's it. That's the Crucible 1. We now have access to the, the fabled artifact. We can now go and, and plug up the well, I guess. Anyway, let's grab it. But yeah, it's an ugly looking thing, isn't it? You have to wonder who puts that kind of stuff together. But the, these are the are these the Night Sentinels or the Wraiths? Someone in the comments in an earlier video said that these were Wraiths, but I'm pretty sure these are the Night Sentinels. But I, I think it's kind of cool that they show up and give you mad respect. <laughs> But that is the Necropolis and the Hell Knights. Not the Hell Knights, the Hell Guards are over and done with. We've got all of the secrets, we've got all the Argent Cells, all the Elite Guards were found. Done pretty well. After this, it is on to Vega Central Processing. But this has been Mr. Icarus. Thank you very much for watching. Icarus out.